Hi everybody, I'm Kara Armano with Trout Unlimited and today we're going to be talking with Brett Zendel from Loon Outdoors. Oh, yep, here he is, I think. So, let's see if we can get it. Oh, here we go. Yeah. We're Looks like we're headed that way. At least I think. Yep. Just says waiting on Loon Outdoors. Hi, Brett. Hey, Kara. How you doing? I'm well. How are you today? I am doing well. It's good to see you. Yeah, you too. Is it nice there in Oregon today? Is it nice in Oregon? Um, <laughs> nice in Oregon in November is uh, different than what you'd expect from nice other places. So it sure. rained a ton this weekend and we needed it. So yes, it is a okay. nice day in Oregon. Well, that's good. That's yeah. good. We're here in Southern, South, I'm in Southwest Colorado and it's beautiful today. We need more precipitation, but it's nice to have the sun. Good, good. Yeah, so I was just telling everybody who's watching today that we're gonna be talking a little bit about responsible recreation and kind of how that whole campaign got started because of the pandemic um and what's going on with loon and how it's handling you know what what the business was like at the beginning of the sure. pandemic maybe what it looked like during the middle and towards the end and we can kind of tie it back into responsible recreation and how you feel like that's affecting your business so i'll just kind of let you run with it and interrupt every once in a while uh that sounds great well first of all um I'm glad to hear that we're at the end of a pandemic because um, that is, yeah, there you go. Fingers um, yeah, well, the, um, I think our business followed what I, I think is a, a common trajectory along this time where during that first couple of weeks when things locked down, it was pretty scary for a little while. And um, we started to see fly shops closing and that made a big difference for us when orders started to get canceled. And when we didn't know the the writing was, or we didn't know the trajectory of things. So I'm, it's tongue in cheek to, you know, call out you for saying that we're at the end of a pandemic here. But um, at that point, nobody really knew. And so it was pretty scary for us not knowing what it was going to look like with um, people being able to, to fish or being able to, to buy product or anything like that. So um, it was pretty scary there for a while. And then, um, I can go into more detail, but when things started to slowly open back up, it, it seemed like everyone had a, had the same idea, which was, man, we need to get outside and uh, fishing is a great way to do that. And it's a great way to get outside by myself. And so we saw that more and more. Um, and so when things started to open back up, it was like somebody turned on the, on the fire hydrant. So it yeah. was, it so was crazy to go. Kind of slowly, you said in April, you know, things were still a little questionable for you. You guys were down about, I think you said about 25% versus the prior year, just given the fact that March orders were ceasing and shops were not able to open and all those kinds of things. Yeah. And things were pretty scary from your employees standpoint too. Is that true? It was true. And so we were, we were fortunate to be at a spot where even though we were down um, and we were, we were pretty even, we were up through the first quarter of the year and then, um, or sorry, up through the first couple months of the year. And then when the, that first round of lockdowns happened, things uh, were down, but had kind of planed out. So we weren't um, down huge on the year, but um month to month we were down which was which was pretty scary and so we weren't ever at a spot where we weren't sure every day whether we were going to be able to to keep people on board so yeah. we were really really fortunate um that our warehouse is set up in a way that guys could come in and be safe but we were um also fortunate to be busy enough that it warranted keeping everybody on oh that's great to hear for sure yeah so then once things started ramping up say may into june and probably throughout the summer, you mentioned a fire hose. I'm sure it felt like that at times because, and things were just flying off the shelves for you, right? Both to fly shops, direct to consumer. Did you have any issues in those times as well? Oh man, well, yes. And I mean, the vast majority of what we do is through fly shops. And so that's where, that's where the bulk of things uh, go for us. And so when we have inventory issues, it's, it is filling big orders for fly shops. Uh, it's, it's not really the direct to consumer that puts a huge dent in our, in our inventory. Um, but 
yes, it is a unique challenge to go from um, fly shops across the country saying like, hold on, hold on, hold on to we need this all yesterday. And um, we also, so, I mean, that's just a, a funny inventory issue to, to have with, there's, with no kind of steady ramp up to it, that it's all of a sudden we need to fill orders and we need to get them out now. So that's one unique issue. The other unique issue is that uh, supply chains have been disrupted and things take longer to ship. They're more expensive to ship. And we also have kind of a new set of competitors when it comes to sourcing products. So um, we've run into some huge issues with uh, the folks who do some of our documentation for us because they are you know, months behind because now they are trying to get um, all the documentation done for hand sanitizers. And we were back ordered on caps for um, our fly spritz floatant because now hand sanitizing companies are you know, buying out stock wherever they can find it for bottles that we used to, <laughs> we used to have no problem getting. We now had sourcing issues. So there have definitely been some unique challenges from that uh, standpoint. And my business partner, Alan, does, I mean, he is amazing with how well he can manage inventory. And so his ability to keep tabs on this stuff and to stay ahead of it has been fantastic. Man, who would have thought that something so simple as a little spritzer cap top would be so hard to come by? Oh, man, pandemic. that it's is fence. I mean, they, it's what people yeah. are using for hand sanitizer all over the world. So sure, exactly. Makes sense. Makes sense. Exactly. So, and um, how are things today? What, what, What's happening with Loon Outdoors, you know, say November, mid-November? <laughs> Hypothetically, mid-November? <laughs> Hypothetically. We're, we're, we're one day past. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, man, things have not slowed down. And so we have seen a, um, a, a that trajectory from a, a busy spring into a, a really busy summer into what looks to be at least from what we've seen from preseason orders, which were due on November 1st, which is um, where we see a, get a good feel for what fly shops are anticipating for the next year. From what we've seen, um, this momentum is is going to continue, at least from, from what fly shops themselves are expecting. And so when, when we see fly shops from all over the country uh, with all kinds of different models, all showing that kind of confidence and, you know, I part of it could be just their confidence in in loon as a brand but i have a feeling it's more across the board in what what they're seeing and what they're expecting to be able to do next year so that's a long answer but uh, the long and the short of it is it's it doesn't seem like things are slowing down that's certainly great news and have you seen any trends towards certain parts of the country maybe bulking up their orders or this summer being busier than others or was it across the board the country was seeing anglers coming into their shops buying th buying your products and getting out on the water oh, man it sure seemed like it was across the board and now it's also it's also so tough to see um so many shops do such a great job with their online presence and that becomes really hard for us to track because as soon as the product leaves our door we don't know if it was shipped from a, um, a fly shop in california to a, a customer in in nevada or colorado so it's it's tough for us to track but it it does seem like looking at our pre-seasons uh, across the board shops are seem like they're confident with um, with what's coming and that has to have come from uh, what they've experienced the last couple months. Yeah, we've I've done the same interview with some fly shops and they said the same thing. They just, they've had to turn away clients at the door for guiding because it's just over overwhelming them. But uh, I think it's a good problem to have, right? I mean, yeah. we talked before your your buddy Matt Cleese had a great <laughs> had a great title for this, and I oh, totally man. agree. It. <laughs> you remember what it was? I do remember what it was, but I need to give the caveat that this can sound so tasteless to somebody who's experienced the the downsides of this, because it is it's crazy that this has been such a, a boost for outdoor industries. And so I hesitate to repeat this because I understand it could be tactless for somebody who has experienced the downside of this. But um, uh, somebody at Loon referenced that the last time that the fly fishing industry experienced a, this kind of lift across the board was when um, Brad Pitt starred in a uh, 
a fairly well-known fly fishing film. And so he has referred to this as a COVID runs through it. Right. And so right. it is, that is not to make light of a, of a, a, what is a, you know, life and death situation for a lot of people, but that has, for the fly fishing industry, it is crazy that that is, that is what this has felt like. Certainly. And, you know, I think it's, I agree. I, I, we certainly cannot make light of what's going on, especially with a big wave going across our country again right now. Yeah. Um, but I think for the fly fishing business and industry, it's been a great boon to see. But what we want to talk about a little bit more today is responsible recreation, mm -hmm. and how you can get out there in a responsible manner. Obviously, fly fishing is great for that because you can get on the water, you can separate, you can use rod lengths to determine that you're for sure at least six feet apart <laughs> they're about nine feet oh man so, well hopefully it's not coming down to that if you're able I to use a rod not. yeah a rod length you're you're probably still too close yes but. certainly but um but do you think be, that responsible recreation has something to do with the increased amount of business that you've seen um i hope so and i think i think it's when we talk about responsible recreation i think that can come depending on on your priorities you can be referring to a couple different things here and so to recreate responsibly in 2020 uh, that really means you're you're keeping your distance and uh, potentially wearing a mask and you're keeping uh, the pandemic in mind um, but responsible recreation other times uh, factors in something higher up the priorities so or changing the priorities around. So I think to recreate responsibly at another time might mean more. Am I doing something that is uh, sustainable for both me as, a, as an individual and, and my health? Am I doing something that's sustainable for the, the places that I'm going? And so um, I think that we're fortunate in that I don't, I hope that, that people are, um, are considering those things, but I have a feeling that more than anything, the, the thing that has caused this is that it's, it's one of the things that people have been able to do and so my hope isn't that necessarily th or that this has uh, been birthed out of a desire to recreate responsibly with those other things in mind but that it will um, instill that that desire that it'll it'll get people outside especially getting them outside on their home waters places that they can get to within a couple hours and places that they can hopefully fall in love with and take more ownership of and so uh, have that hopefully become something that they that becomes part of what they do more often more consistently and then with more passion yeah I think that's a big part of it right we talked about this a little bit when we just when we had the, our initial conversation um, but about how important it is for fly shops and guides to be introducing people to their backyards maybe for the first time or maybe in a completely different way than they've ad adventured in those public lands and waters than they had before. And I think, you know, a lot of it comes down to um, certainly brands such as Loon talking about responsible recreation, talking about ways to get out responsibly, enjoy their public lands and waters, but also encouraging fly shops and guides to do the same thing because they're, the, they're going to be the one with the face-to-face -face interaction with those with those yeah. anglers. And what's so what's so interesting about fly fishing is it's such a unique thing I, up until the the advent of of social media uh, it was it was anglers were pretty much invisible. And so when you when you went fishing you had no idea other than if you had friends that went fishing or if you had hired a, an outfitter or a guide you had no idea how anybody else fished this if anybody else fished this and hopefully you didn't find out cuz you didn't see anybody else on the water. So I think um you know, we are in a unique position because we have a, a loud voice that um, just because we we are distributed so widely that we can we can communicate with a lot of different people, but we don't have the same impact that guides and fly shops do in that they are in what is otherwise a, um, a pretty isolated activity. They are the the one common touch point where they can influence how somebody fishes, not just what flies they choose or where they go, but just making sure that, that they're doing it in a way that they're conscious about what they're using, what they leave behind, um, how, how fish are handled, um, where they're stepping, how they're treading, all of that kind of stuff. And so I think that's where, where fly shops have a really unique role in all of this and a really important role in guides too, because they're even on the water 
but to be able to to influence how how anglers get on the water and to do so in a way that that they're helping anglers have the best experience possible knowing that um the existence of that fly shop depends on the health of that fishery and so to make sure that they're getting out there and having a great time but that they can do that same thing again tomorrow yeah certainly and i think loons positioned well to ha to have that conversation and to perpetuate that that kind of the conversation to fly shops to guides because you are based in the environment right like you are really cognizant of the products that you make them being environmentally responsible some of the techniques that you guys make to create these products um some of those kinds of things you want to talk about that a little bit um, sorry, you you kind of paused there in the, oh, in the middle. No worries. I was just saying, so Loon's known for its environmental responsibility and, and being a 1% for the planet member. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd love for you to talk a little bit about how you feel about Loon getting that message across to fly shops, guides, and consumers in general. Sure. Um, I think that's a it's a message that's been a part of what we've done from the, from the beginning of, of Loon. And I think being an environmental company is, is something that comes down to consistency. And um, I think that there's a lot of, of other brands that are doing a really, really good job of, of telling the story. And I think to tell that story well, you need to tell it consistently and, and make good decisions across the board. And I think that a lot of brands are doing a good job of, of talking about how um, it's not a it's not a really clean thing that there's there's a lot of difficult decisions that that need to be made when it comes to to sourcing when it comes to packaging when it comes to how stuff is is shipped and what is what um, fills in a box and so um, we're always doing our our best to make the the best decision that we can with um, with everything from from bottles to uh, backer cards to um, to our processes to to raw materials, and so I think um, I'm not sure exactly uh, like where to to go from there, other than to say it it is just a constant um, a constant set of decisions that need to be made, and it's like you can decide to be uh, you choose to get married, and then you have your wedding, but then you know your marriage really comes down to making that decision every day. And I think that's what, that's what I think it, we've experienced with wanting to be um, an environmental company is the consistency of making those decisions of, man, we cannot do that product, even though it really seems like it could sell well because it, we, we just can't get behind what's in it. And so I think what we've experienced is that it comes down to making, making those little decisions every day and, and, doing the best we can with each decision that we're confronted with. Yeah, that's amazing. And I think that comes across as, and is well known throughout the industry from a consumer standpoint for your products. And I think it's just a matter of, like you said, keep telling that story and keep talking about it and making sure that, that people know because it is an important standpoint and it's foundationally who your brand is as Loon. So it's, it's awesome to hear that you're not going to stop on that note. That's for sure. No, we're not. Yeah. Um, anything else you want to talk about in regards to responsible recreation? Have you been getting out to fish at all this during oh, the man. pandemic? If you would have asked me uh, four days ago, I would have said no. But I just got away this weekend and uh, went and caught some steelhead with some friends. And it was a much needed time away. So, uh -huh. yes, I have, but only as of recently. And it was so good to be on the water. I'm sure it's nice to take a little bit of a breather after your super busy summer season so well yeah. deserved. That's well thank perfect. you thank you yeah yeah and we'll continue to do this um have these conversations if there's anything else you want to add um about responsible recreation or how you feel maybe that um new anglers could jump in toward to conservation and and kind of get down that line um feel free to chat us up on instagram or facebook or anywhere really awesome well, Kara, thanks for the work you're doing. We appreciate it. Yeah, thanks so much, Brett. I appreciate your time, and um, we will chat with you again hopefully soon. Awesome. I'll look forward to it. Okay. Have a good thanks, day. Thanks, Kara. You too.